Senor's life. This definitely has to be the case. Not too much. Because my father was a fighter, it would be my first baby picture. So I six months old, I had boxing gloves on my neck, a little baby shorts, baby boom on my neck. When I sing boom boom, I want you all to answer my question. Andrea George Vukovic is one kind of political street fighter who says he came from the wrong side of the tracks and is now trying to fight his way to uh, power and prestige in City Hall. Next, we're going to take a look at uh, two other kinds of fighters, the Mancini's father and son. Forty years ago, Boom Boom Mancini Sr. entered the ring as a professional because it was the only way out in the Depression era. His son, 40 years later, has now gone into the ring to prove two things. One, that he's an excellent professional fighter. And certainly his record at this point points it out. He's won seven in a row, six by knockouts. But he also has another thing to prove, and that is that he's going to get the title that his father missed 40 years ago, the Boom Boom Mancini. I, mean, I was aggressive all the all time, all time. I never took a back, backward step. I kept moving in. But sometimes I wish I did take a backward step. <laughs> They called him Boom Boom. A hard punching lightweight who got to be the number one contender before World War II and Uncle Sam sidetracked his career. Forty years later, they call him Boom Boom. Also, a young, promising lightweight who, like his father, hits hard and has visions of grabbing the title. For Lenny Boom Boom Mancini, the memories of a million punches, tank town fights in grimy little gyms, and that one elusive shot at the title are still vivid. But for Raymond Boom Boom Mancini, the future is just as clear. He wants that title his father missed. Since I was little, I've all I've heard is the stories how he got robbed of the lightweight title. He signed and then he got drafted a month before he was supposed to fight. And uh, you know, he never talks about it badly, but I know you know it broke his heart, and I could just see it. And ever since I was little, I've always said I want to win that title for me and my father. For most boxers who go into the ring to make a living, it's only a way out. Poverty, broken families, chronic unemployment—that's the stuff that puts lead in a boxer's belly and steel in his jaw. It's depression. I couldn't get a job. But we had to fight hard. I had to fight a lot of tough guys before I got uh, where I did. And uh, we just hardly get anything. We got $20 in Youngstown. Four rounder, $20. And for the sixth round, got $35. But young Boom Boom doesn't fit into that mold. A star athlete during his school years, a class president at Youngstown's Cardinal Mooney popular kid from a comfortable middle-class home. That's not your classic profile of a pro boxer. It's funny because when I was a little boy, people said, what do you want to be? I say, a profile like my father. And they say, oh, that, you know, people think that's cute or whatever because, you know, little boys at that time want to be firemen. And but the funny thing is, that's always what I want to be, and I've stuck by it. He fights because he likes it. I won't tell you something. He looked at my, I never used to know about it. He used to go and look at my scrapbook. He knows more about my, my scrapbook than I do myself. He knows about every fight I had. He could tell me punch by punch. For the last several months, Ray has been training in New York City, where his manager, David Wolf and trainer Murphy Griffith are headquartered. 
The day before his January 15th fight with highly touted Dale Gordon, they brought their young lightweight to the Buckeye Elks training room for a workout. Get down a little more. Get down a little more and come on. Let me make this step. That's, that's it. There you go. That's it. Now keep them, keep the elbows a little close to you, okay? Keep them a little close, loose but close. To the left and to the right. The kid has so much talent, and uh, because being an amateur, you know, it's different from the pros. But what I like about the guy, he's got, he's got the tools, he got hard, and he's really aggressive, and he's got a lot of the things that mostly you look in to see if a fighter or a prospect's got it. You know, and he doesn't have a good style for the amateur rank because the amateur ranks is straight up, and they, you know, his style is not made like for the international boxer style, and he, he wouldn't go far in that. But as a professional, this kid would go. He is not only punching so much harder, but that he's finishing people now. As an amateur, he would get people in trouble and then get wild and let them off the hook. Now he's become more precise. He's shortened up his punches. Uh, because Murphy Griffith has shown him exactly where the punches are supposed to go, and he's hitting the spots, and that's bringing the knockouts about. Promotion and public relations are as much a part of today's fight game as a boxer's skills. But for a Depression-era boxer who had to make his own name, having a skilled promotion man behind you is the big difference. This guy got a lot of connections. Matter of fact, he's got connections all over the world, in Europe. That's all it is, it's connections and breaks. Young Boom Boom has had over 50 amateur fights and fought his way to the National Golden Gloves before veteran trainer Murphy Griffith saw in him the head and heart of a pro. Ellen Mancini is no stranger to the fight game. As Lenny's young sweetheart, she saw the rough kid from Youngstown brawl through the amateur ranks and claw his way along an endless series of nickel-dime pro fights. All my lady friends always say to me, how can you watch it? And I always say, I'd rather be there knowing what's going on than be home worrying about things happening that may not be happening, see? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Right now, I'm here to boxing. I, I think they understand, you know, fighting's what I'm into, and uh, I can't let nothing hold me back. We will be thinking about contenders within a year, and certainly are no more than two years away from a world title. And that's cutting a year off my original schedule, because he's just coming on so fast. When I sing boo -boo, I want you all to answer me back with Come home like this, and if I get a big win, and the, you know, hearing people cheer for me, and hearing, see how, how much they appreciate knowing that I've sacrificed for them, then it's all worth it. I think he deserves what you know the best there is, you know, because he really works hard. He's been dedicated to sports from the time he's little. So when he started thinking about boxing, he was thinking about it as his other like the other sports. But there was always that little added incentive. He's always felt like his, like his dad's friends told him that his father was the uncrowned champion of the world. <laughs> Thank 
people generally classify me as a slugger, a brawler. Um, I don't consider myself a one knock, you know, one punch knock. I don't, I don't have to depend on one punch put that way. I, I do consider myself a, a slugger because of my height wise and uh, but aggressive. But like I said, I'm developing class along with it. I'm developing fluid moves. I'm getting um, robbing and even slipping shots. I'm not taking no shots with my face. I've got my hands up blocking punches, and it's just not easy for the people to hit me. Well, he's more scientific than I was. He's, he moves nice. He likes to throw a lot of punches. And uh, he's, got a good, he's got a good start. And uh, he's similar to the guy I've boxed, similar. But he comes in, but I'll tell you what, I, I see him, he can box too if he wants to. He can box. It's just the idea of being a world champion. It's just uh, something, like I said, for me and my father and for my family. If I get it for him, I feel, you know, he's got that part of that world title. Good. I promised myself I wouldn't be a, 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 be a type of guy that punches in, punches out. I'm um, hopefully the money, like I said, will be there. I can make enough money, to, um, invest it, have it be work for me while I'm, career, you know, go along in my career. When I'm done fighting, have good things there, you know, and uh, just relax, enjoy life, and uh, you know, be with my family. I hope not to get married until I'm done fighting because it's no good for a fighter to be married. And so, at the time, life will really actually be starting at times. So, but I know I got to sacrifice now. And for that to be there, I don't plan on letting that know me back until I'm, like I said, done fighting and um, uh, hopefully enjoy myself and uh, relax yes, and take care of my family, take care of my father. I, would say I don't, I don't want to see them. I want to see them have a lot of good things that they never had. My, my father, there's no money when he was fighting, and uh, I'm gonna take care of him and uh, hopefully things will just work out. Good evening, I'm Lois Ford Long. And I'm Len Rome. Here's what's happening. 